I'm Tyler Burgess of Walk With Me. I live in Eugene, Oregon, and one thing I do for my business is organize and give guided walking tours all over the world. And I'm preparing to bring people to Sicily next year. So I am checking out the hotels and the best places to go and seeing if the gelato is good. Is the wine good? I do thorough research. I've taken a boat out to a small island called Mothia. We are on a little island along the African coast. This region represents a swath of ancient Sicily from Phoenician to Greek and Arab. Mothia was bought in the early 1900s by Joseph Whitaker, a wealthy Englishman who discovered Phoenician remains while inspecting the vines on the island. I'm going to play for you Sicilian folk music recorded in the 1950s in Sicily. This is how the island may have looked in the day of the Phoenicians and the Greeks, and then we will walk around the island and see the ruins. We'll go into another room of the museum. These would have been the tombstones. This is a photo of an archaeological dig on the island. This is the Englishman, Giuseppe Whitaker, Whitaker, who bought the island and developed a lot of the archaeological digs, preserving the history. This would have been the tomb they found. Here's a nice museum of old farm implements. There are some nice mosaic floors still left in these ruins.
In the distance, you can see the white mounds of salt on the coast. It was a small barrack built outside the main fortification area. We've now come to the south gate built the 5th century before Christ was born. From the sign, you can see that at one time this was a large sanctuary. I had a great afternoon walking around these ruins. This little island is very fertile. Here are some pomegranates. It's probably always windy here. Would have been one of the city gates. You can uh, see the marks where there would have been a gate, and then you had to get your wagon around this marker here. This was a main gate from the mainland and if you look straight across at one time there was a walkway. Now it's covered by water but in low tide I understand sometimes you can actually walk across it. The last time this north gate was reconfigured was at the end of the 15th century before Christ because there was a new catapult devised, they had to rebuild the city walls to defend against it. Boats bring us out from the mainland and take us back. These are mounds of salt they have harvested from the salty seawater here. In the winter, these terracotta tiles cover the mounds of salt over the winter. Before mechanization, these Dutch windmills were used to grind the salt. And it's now a museum and we can go in there. And I can go up on top and get a view for us. We'll go inside, walk up the steps, and examine the salt grinding equipment here. harvest takes about a year from the time they begin filling in the pans, as they're called, with different levels of seawater. It evaporates and then they scrape out the salt and it must sit in those mounds during the winter, uh, protected by the terracotta, before it is actually ground into salt, little grains of salt. They 
have a nice collection of silver Russian salt pewters, so it was a valuable commodity. These are the salt pans. They have varying levels of depth. famous for their masala wine here. I'm walking back to this train station. It's about two miles and it's a lovely walk. Yes, I did sample these grapes because they're ripe and because stolen grapes are always best. As you can see, one of my favorite things is just walking down the street wherever I am in the world. This is a winery and the trucks are lined up to take their turn to deliver their grapes. Notice how they've lined their trucks with plastic so all the grape juice doesn't leak out. You can see what they do with the grape stem. It looks to me like they're taking samples of the grapes of each truck. are bottles it looks like empty bottles ready to be filled 
This is the name of the winery. The sign says Point of Sale, wine typical of Sicily. I did buy some of their wine, but I'm not sure it was from that particular processor. And this is my train station back to Tropani. This is another day when I took the train from Tropani to see Castelmar del Golfo. stored in this tunnel and I will play you their Carter's folk song. In this recording, we hear the driver singing as he guides the reins of his horse. The six-line text echoes a typical folk motif, the visit to the house of a sweetheart to give her a handkerchief as a pledge of love. All these folk songs were recorded in the early 1950s in Sicily. This next one is a mother singing to her baby, but all mothers sing to their babies about wishing the baby would go to sleep. And then I took a bus to Agrigento. The Greek Temple.
and meet my guide at the ruins. And another one during the Roman Empire. Juno. Okay, the same thing with the other ones. Jupiter, Zeus, Minerva, Athena, uh, Aphrodite, Venus, and so on. Now we are... Prima di proseguire, un'ultima cosa. Quando vediamo un tempio, this is the sacrifice altar outside the temple. One of the big mysteries to me is how did they build these things? So I bought a guidebook. Well, first of all, the Greek architect had a plan that he wrote out how the blocks were to be cut and then exactly where they were to go to make a temple. And then the workers, these people were slaves. What they did, first of all, was they had the supervisor, the architect here, uh, telling them what to do, and they would cut, as you can see, they would cut a groove, and then into the groove they would pound wedges of wood. And eventually they would come off with these big blocks of stone, and then they could roll them on timbers. <clears throat> And this is how they would uh, get them up to a temple is on these pulling them with uh, men's legs where they're machines and you can see the men over here they were using a block and tackle system here. This block and tackle system here was created and discovered by Archimedes, the Greek mathematician, philosopher, and engineer. And he died in 2012 BC before Christ. The only difference between the block and tackle mechanism of the Greeks and of the crane you see today is <clears throat> these are powered by men's legs and today they are powered by machines. And then the architect also had a model maker who could help him see what the design was like. These were different lifting methods of the stones onto a temple. So at one time these temples would have been filled with idols and they would have been painted. This is a method they might have used to move a 10 ton or 6 ton block of stone. They could use oxen, they could roll them. Uh, here's one of the methods they could use to lift these stone columns and the stone blocks. You have the block and tackle here invented by Archimedes. And then uh, the power would come from men walking inside this squirrel-like cage here. Now some columns were actually carved right out of the ground like this and then they'd be broken off and hauled away. And uh, here is one of the old quarries that the stone was never hauled away from yet. Here are some of the tools that they invented and used. Archaeological finds from workshops. Here are the actual tools And sometimes they use oxen as well as men for power. I then took the bus up to the town above the ruins to have a look around the lovely town. This is the tourist information office.
Nice lamp post. This is an agrigento. So I'd like to share with you some of my sketchbook diary. This was um, this was a walk along the Sea of Castelmare del Golfo. This was just a wire sculpture, kind of blowing in the breeze. These are more Greek ruins in Agrigento. I'm Tyler Burgess of Walk With Me. Thank you for joining me on another program as we walk the world.